great to see you here my name is Luc de Custer welcome to my YouTube channel this is another video offered to you by us and when you're here for the first time do not forget to subscribe to the channel click on the subscribe button click on the bell and YouTube will inform you every time we have a new video for you we've been talking about finance in previous videos we've been identifying different parameters and it's very important to understand how these parameters work because we want to use them to evaluate the efficiency of investments we looked at the net present value we looked at the profitability index we had payback time we had return on investment but there are other parameters that are also very interesting and that we should understand and evaluate when we are looking at investments in this presentation i will talk about a new parameter which is in fact the internal rate of return and the internal rate of return is basically the yield of the investment when we look at our investment we have the discounted cash flows we have the initial investment and we can use them to calculate the net present value which is very important to see that our project or our investment creates a profit but we also want to know what is the yield what is the yield of our investment just consider when you are putting money in the bank you get a certain interest it's a kind of a yield and the internal rate of return is calculating that same thing for your investment so we invest the money we want to see what is the investment uh, yield and that's what we are going to do in this presentation now we can define in fact the internal rate of return as the yield or interest rate for which the net present value equals zero so basically we have to find an interest rate we're going to use the formula of the net present value and put their different interest rates until the net present value is equal to zero now we've been doing that before we've been using some investments for example we looked at the payback of a loan now when we consider the investment and the money we pay the money we lend to pay for the house that mortgage when we take the discounted uh, future value the payments over the years of the loan we will see when we calculate the internal rate of return of this uh, let's say of this case you will see that the internal rate of return will be equal to the interest rate you have to pay to the bank now there are more things to do about the uh, IRR the internal rate of return and one of the questions we can ask what has to be the value of the internal rate of return now what happens we lend money we use money in a company but that's not for free so we also have to understand when we have a business how much does money cost to us so when we are using money to work in the company what is the interest rate what is the weighted average cost of the capital that we have to pay to use that money and when we have an investment the internal rate of return should at least be equal or higher than the weighted average cost of the capital which is quite logic if i would invest my money and my yield is lower than the internal rate of return it means that i'm although my project may be at the profit because of the yield i'm still losing money so it's very important to identify that now the internal rate of return should never be smaller than the WAC because then you're not recovering the cost of the cash that you are using and it's an important parameter to evaluate and in combination with the net present value and the internal rate of return we have a good view what 
the efficiency of our investment or our project is. The WAC is basically a lower boundary and it's the minimum that we have to recover. Now, in some cases, when we have high risk projects, higher risk means that we want to have a higher return. And the WAC being the minimum value, when we have highly or higher risk projects, we may want to impose an additional compensation for the risk. And then we talk about the required rate of return or RRR or sometimes also triple R. Now, the thing is, when we get the ERR and we compare it with the WAC, and when we are not within the conditions that are defined within the company, we may have to find other ways to invest our money or to select a different investment or project. Now, when we look at the palm tree dilemma, the internal rate of return, the palm tree dilemma is an idea I promoted and I explained to my students what the use of the ERR is. Let's just look at the ERR that we obtain. We have the net present value. So basically, we can consider what to do with our project. The internal rate of return will determine if we are using, let's say, or recuperating the cost of the money. The net present value will tell us that our project has a profit or not. Now, the next thing what we have to do is that we have to see what are we going to do. We may have different options. An option may be uh, to put the money in an uh, alternative investment, for example, buying bonds or putting it on a bank account or uh, buying stock instead of investing it in a project. And basically, here is the idea of the palm tree dilemma. We find a worry-free way to invest our money and instead of investing it in a project, which probably will give you a lot of headache, a lot of things that can go wrong, uh, probably the results will, will not be as good as you imagined. So it may be better to put it in a safer investment and enjoy your free time under a palm tree. Now, be careful because coconuts may be very dangerous. You have to be aware of the dangers related to the coconuts. Even your investment, your safe investment, can take different directions. For example, when we have some crisis situation like we are having at the moment with the Corona-19 or the COVID-19 situation. Now, when we are going to calculate, we want to find that value. Now, when we look at the formula, the formula of the net present value, we see that this is a formula in which you have to put the interest rate. But when we look at it, we cannot really find an expression which gives us the interest rate as a function of the initial investment and the cash flows. Basically, when we are looking at the formula for the ERR, we have to find the or use the net present value formula. And the net present value formula in this case has to be equal to zero. And we have to change the interest rate by the ERR. So we have the summation of the discounted cash flows, where the discounting parameter is one plus the internal rate of return plus the initial investment. Now, the internal rate of return we don't know and we have to find it. Now, typically when we want to find this in, uh, expression, it's mathematically not possible to find it. So we have to find other ways to calculate the internal rate of return. Now, what we can do here is to use a mathematical method, which I also teach in uh, courses like college algebra, which is what we call a trial and error. And what we are going to do, we are going to assume that the ERR has a certain value and put it in the NPV formula. And we try by 
adjusting the numbers to find an interest rate which brings the NPV close enough to zero. We will not be able to find exactly zero and it's very dangerous in Excel to say we stop the calculation when the difference, for example, is equal to zero. It may never stop, you may end up in a loop. So we have to say we want to have a value which is smaller than or the difference or the net present value is smaller than a certain amount. Typically, we want to find an ERR with two decimals. And once we find the approximations that the third decimal is stable, we consider that to be the exact internal rate of return. Now we come back to that later in some calculations. Now, luckily, we have, in fact, also Excel. But let's have a first look at the method of trial and error. And the method of trial and error is a mathematical method where we have a continuous function. And a continuous function has a very specific property. A continuous function is a function you draw without lifting the pen from the paper. And when we have on one side a negative value and the other side a positive value, the rule of the or the property of the continuous function is that we have to pass through zero somewhere. So when we have a value x1 and a value x2 and the, let's say, the interest rate x1 and x2, and for example, for x1, the interest rate gives us a negative NPV for x2, a positive NPV, then we know that the zero is somewhere in between. So we find x0 by pro successive steps. And when we look at the graph, we have the percentage and the net present value. We have the evolution of the net present value as a function of the percentage. And we see that it goes from a negative value to a positive value. And there is some crossing on the percentage axis. We find for x1, we find that f of x1 is smaller than zero. So the net present value corresponding with the interest rate x1 is negative. We have a second one, x2, and for x2, the fx2 is larger than zero, or the net present value when we use the discount rate x2 is positive. Then we know that x0 is somewhere in between those two values. And this is the property that we are going to use if we want to do a manual calculation. Now, the manual calculation is not really difficult. It's just a consecutive number of calculation. If you would do it by hand, it would be quite hard to do it because of all the decimals. Luckily, we also have integrated formulas in spreadsheet programs. We have financial calculators, which will help us to work with the formulas in an easier way. And Excel has an integrated ERR formula. And the formula is, in fact, very simple. You put as parameter ERR, you select the values, all the values, starting from the initial investment till the last investment. And then, in some cases, you have to put there a guess. Now, what's happening here? Uh, when we are working with the internal rate of return, we have, in fact, uh, the investment, we have the cost, we have the uh, cash flows, the periodic cash flows. All of these values are integrated in the term values in that formula. So we select everything. It's not like in the net present value where we took out the um, initial investment. The second thing what we do is that the calculations in Excel go up to 0.00001%. So the iterations that Excel is doing will stop when the difference is equal to this percentage. Now, there is some possibility that something doesn't work the way it should. 
And it means that in some cases, the formula doesn't find a solution with the desired precision or the program precision. Why is that? Because Excel only gives 20 iterations. So when we have the iterations and we need more than 20 iterations, the formula will return an error. Now, in that case, we have to enter a guess. We have to say, well, we think that the, net, uh, the internal rate of return will be approximately 11%. And then the program starts to calculate from that value. Otherwise, it just takes an interval and it can go wrong. So here you have to be careful. Anyway, the calculations of the internal rate of return, we can do it by programming it in Excel, but it's easier to use the integrated formula. Of course, we have to be careful that we have an idea where the internal rate of return will approximately be. So when we put that formula there and we see that it doesn't give a result, we can make quickly a table to see where the net present value goes from negative to positive. And then we put that value in the formula as a guess. The alternative way, and we will look at that in the next presentation, is a step-by-step -step calculation of the internal rate of return, which is very simple to do. It just, you have to do the programming a little bit, and once you've finished it, you can do these calculations very easily, but you have to know a little bit more about Excel. This was the presentation about the internal rate of return, an important parameter because it gives us the yield of the investment. We can compare the yield with the cost of money for our company, and it's a very good parameter to say, well, is our investment good? Uh, typically, we will not uh, make a selection on the internal rate of return alone. When we are evaluating projects, we will not use the internal rate of return uh, to uh, select a project. It's typically a cutoff value. Every time when we see that an internal rate of return is less than the WAC or the required rate of return, we will reject, in fact, the investment or the project. On the other hand, when we have the internal rates of returns, uh, when they are acceptable, we will use other parameters like the NPV. So this was the presentation about the internal rate of return. We are looking forward to seeing you in one of our next videos. Thank you and bye-bye. <laughs>